All right, so at the beginning, maybe we can do a quick introduction. Sure. So just a one minute, who you are, what you do. Sure. All right, so maybe Arani. Sure. Yeah. My name is Arani. I'm a manager with KPMG Cybersecurity Practice. Uh, before KPMG, I was with Lloyd and PwC as well. So I, I was born and in the consulting world. So I've never done the opposite. You know, I've ne never been on my client's shoes. I've always been like a client service person. Uh, in KPMG, what I focus on is basically on cyber strategy and governance. So we have four pillars of service, basically different service lines for our clients. Uh, my specialty kind of lies in strategy and governance, helping clients uh, develop cybersecurity programs, do their roadmaps, understand where they are, uh, that kind of thing. Great. All right, Maria. Thank you. So uh, my name is Maria. I'm a manager in PwC uh, Canada. So I'm with our privacy and cybersecurity practice on the privacy side, so the data protection side. So for anyone here who is not very technical, <laughs> that's me as well. Um, so a bit about my background. So I came from a compliance position where I worked with an investment firm, and I worked with the Securities Commission, and then I switched over to privacy from a research role, and then I came to PwC. So I came out of industry to uh, consulting. So in PwC, I help with our regulatory assessment, some of our audits, and privacy as well as soft reporting. I also lead our breach response capabilities from a data protection side, as well as I also lead our training and development program for privacy for PwC Canada. So um, I don't have a technical background, but in my three and a half years at PwC, I've been able to get that experience by being by working with different practice areas and actually getting that exposure. So I'm happy to talk about that further. On the phone. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm Naresh, uh, I'm the Director for Cybersecurity Consulting at uh, Avnad, which is essentially a Microsoft uh, and uh, Accenture company. Uh, <clears throat> so what I do is that I, read, I lead the pr uh, practice for Canada. Uh, we're part of a larger team, uh, which is a North American practice, and um, uh, um, you know, it's, it's very much similar to what uh, my other panelists do, but uh, what we are known for and what we live and breathe is system integration, right? So we try to bring all the stuff that they talk about, bring it together, put it into technology, enable the process, this is what you do to protect, detect, and uh, respond from anything that happens in the cyber world. Okay, wonderful. So in my presentation, I actually threw a lot of numbers, um, but that's my perspective. So from your daily position, so also you are the hiring manager. So what do you see the job opportunity in your like a working environment? So no specific order, anyone can jump in. Maybe Maria first. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of opportunities from the data compliance, data protection side. Uh, generally, data protection has been more of kind of a legal driven exercise because uh, when you think of data protection, you think of legislation, you think of regulations, you think of laws, you think you need to be a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. A lot of the folks that I work with are not lawyers. What's good about coming from an MBA perspective is that you have an understanding of how businesses function and the operational level. So what is is, for example, business development do, what does finance do, what does human resources do, and you're able to understand the big picture. So you're able to bring that skill set further. So where we're seeing a lot of opportunities and a lot of uh, lack in uh, talent is uh, data protection and compliance and helping to drive out some of those initiatives. We're continuously looking for very talented people, and PwCA also has um, a rotational program where you're able to experience some of the different faculties that we have from data analytics as well as emerging technologies and by that I mean cloud, um, big data as well as um, um, artificial intelligence, uh, um, cyber and privacy as well. Obviously there is work that um, might not sound as exciting where you're doing where you're implementing some controls however it helps to create an audit but it helps to create a baseline foundation in terms of what you're doing. I went off topic a little bit I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good that's a that's an informal session anyway. Uh, sorry what was the question? <laughs> yeah sorry I, can't, I, <laughs> I just want to be quiet. <laughs> So, so uh, what what I see is that uh, you know the job market is is a the MBA brings out some of the best talents from a people and process perspective, right? That's that's really what you hone on. And I've been through the uh, Shulik MBA program, so uh, that re I mean, uh, from a background, I'm an engineer by default or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so before joining the MBA program. I was a geek, as most most folks are. <laughs> uh, but 
once you get into the MBA program, it really sets that mindset into what is people, what is process, and what is technology. Mm -hmm. And now as you move further down, what is privacy, what is data, what is ethics, all of these things come together, and that's what an MBA person can do, mm -hmm. is to bring that big picture and uh, present it. Uh, that is more holistic, that is more defined, and more focused as well, right? So those are the skill sets that are really uh, what you can bring to the table is, you know, I don't want to work with something that is a firewall, encryption, all of these kind of things, right? Although you might uh, like to do that, that's a different mm -hmm. thing. There's money everywhere, but those uh, things are, you know, how do you bring that big picture of cyber mm -hmm. thought process, right? That's where you guys will really shine. Wonderful. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I, I, think, I think I'd agree with, you know, what two of the panelists are saying. So, uh, so I come from a very technical background, right? So I started doing uh, sort of vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, and you know, like secure testing work, right? So it's very technical, core cool technical backgrounds as a, like a geek kind of a kind of a place. But I kind of transitioned slowly into like strategy and governance. And one of the things that be became very clear is when I was doing security testing, when I was doing those technical work, the engineering work, I had one view of you know the organization. And now, you know, doing strategy and governance work, I have a bigger picture view of where that fits in, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so one of the things that I look for, you know, in my teammates and you know, people that I work with, uh, if, if they are from an engineering background, if they're from a technology background, I kind of try to kind of give them the other side of the view as well, the consulting view or the strategy and the governance view, right? So how does you know whatever the person is doing in terms of the technology piece, what does that translate for the business? What that means for the business? So any kind of, you know, any, so these, you know, what Brian talked about, the different terms in terms of encryption, you know, firewalls and you know, the network technologies, you can learn about that, right? There are trainings that you can actually get for that. But what I would want to see in my team is, you know, somebody who can, who can talk with clients, right? Who can maintain a client relationship, right? Understand why you need cybersecurity in the business, right? Because, you know what, like, we won't, the secure testers and the testing part, you won't get to do that if you don't sell that business, right? So you have to drive that value of cybersecurity. You have to translate that value of cybersecurity to business stakeholders who will then sponsor you for the work, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, I think that, that ML commission, you know, that point where the technology pieces kind of meet with the strategy pieces, that's what I look in my team. And, and sir, can I add? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Just, just, uh, just to add to that, I think one of the other skills that's important that you get from an MBA perspective is that you're continuously learning, you have that passion for it, and it's really important in our field because things are changing so quickly on a daily basis. We have to constantly be aware of what are the new requirements from a security standpoint, from a data protection standpoint, and what are the new vulnerabilities that our clients are potentially facing. You also have to be a champion for uh, when you're working in consulting or when you're working in an organization. So you can't just look at your operation and silos. You have to work together with the other teams. So you have to be able to have this consulting, I'm going to yeah. use that word, consulting mindset mm -hmm. regardless of the position that you're in. And some of the other things is helpful is around um, with the research, you're able to take that research and put it into policy. You're able to drive the policy development. So writing skills are really important. Research skills are very important. And then just communication and being able to communicate your ideas with your team. Not only are you in our world, we're educating our clients what they should be doing. So how are you able to communicate those ideas across? Yeah, and one of the trends that you kind of see right now is, so CISOs, you know, Chief Information Security Officers, Take 10 years back, they never used to have the seat at the executive level, right? So CISOs used to report into you know, the CIO, and that's about it. The CIO had an executive role. CISOs never really got an executive role. If you look at right now, the importance is kind of increasing. So they are getting that seat on the table. So they have to have that skill set to translate what are the cybersecurity problems, what are the technical problems you have in a business way, right? Mm -hmm. So your board of directors can understand that, right? Because most of the board, nowadays you have technical members on the board, but most of them are not, right? Most of them are business people, right? They understand revenue, they understand prop e and profit and loss, they understand balance sheets, but that's about it. So yeah. translating, you know, a cyber security problem for a, to a business problem, I think that's a very good skill set to have. And as MBs, you guys, you know, have that, have that business mindset already, right? So if you kind of grasp on the cyber security concept, mm -hmm. that translation becomes easier for you guys. Yeah, so I'll just give you my day in the life, right, <laughs> of a cybersecurity <laughs> professional. 
typically all of us, what we do is that, you know, it goes back into what uh, Arnie and Maria are talking about is that we talk with clients. Think about it, let's do this in another way. You guys have your, I don't know if you're 601 or whatever, you have your 601s, what do you do? You bring all your folks together, right? You do conduct a workshop. Uh, what do you do in your workshop is that you break down the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can assess it. I, typically what we do is gap assessments, et cetera, and all of those kind of things. Similarly, we do the same thing. You know, you should be able to lead that conversation. You should be able to guide the conversation, right? These are skills that you already have inculcated, developed, honed, right? So it's just try to change your framework mm -hmm. into how do you apply it on, the, on a business day-to-day -day life, right? Yeah. So that is, that's the kind of stuff that, we, that I want to hire, right? People that have that uh, thing, I want to hire. Because at the end of the day, I want delivery managers. Mm -hmm. I leave them on the client, and they go and you know, run these workshops, run the assessments, whatever we sell, right? So that's, that's one of the things. The other thing is that when you're a consultant, you're always selling. Right, it's a given. It doesn't matter where you start, where you end, you're always selling. What are you selling? Fear, you're selling risk, you're selling your skills, right? So you bring all that together, and that's what you, uh, I mean, you should be, you're pol I would say that you've polished enough of your skills through your MBA program, put it into practice, you'll see fruits come out, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good point in terms of you're always selling. You're, so think about this, you're also in yourself, your brand, right? So whichever company that you work for, if you're in the consulting side, I mean, you may be a bit biased on the consulting <laughs> side, but, <laughs> but, but That's you know, true. If, you're, if you're from a consulting brand, you're always selling that brand, right? So any client that you work with, any CISO that you work with, he's going to give you a follow-up work because you did something good for them, right? You help them solve a problem, right? So you're always selling that, so you know, that concept is very important to kind of keep in mind as you kind of come and come into consulting tracks. Yeah, and yeah. even just consulting aside, if you're in a if you're in an organization in the industry, you're selling your message, you're selling what you want your department to drive across, right? So part of that is having those interpersonal skills, being able to communicate with people, looking at it from a, a kind of a risk management perspective and going down to the bare minimums, the so what, so we have a problem, here's a solution, the so what. One of the most um, challenging things that I'm seeing with a lot of new new hires that are coming from very technical programs that are, don't have the business mindset or the MBA mindset is they, they are not looking at the business perspective and they provide very theory-based approach to clients. Well, you must implement you know, networking solutions, you must do this. Okay, but what does this mean to a business? How much is it gonna cost them? How long is it gonna take? How are they gonna reduce the cost operations and how are they going to streamline this so these are the things that you I think you know the Schulich MBA program really provides and MBAs in general is they provide you with a different thought process and actually an MBA is what a lot of my colleagues pursue after the fact because they realize they need those skills they are lacking that in some ways all right I think you hear a lot of this but uh, if we summarize that you really want to play your strengths right so your, what you learn, what's your strengths, is diff, are different than other departments, other majors from engineering background, from the computer security, computer science. You play your strengths. What are the strengths you have? Your analytic view, your process, your problem solving, your methodology of the whole holistic view, and also your public speaking, your presentation, your communication, speak of business language. At the end of the day, doesn't matter, it's a cyber security, cyber risk, it's a business problem, it's a people's problem. So you play that to your strengths. Mm -hmm. So you will have a lot of opportunity to enter to this field. Look at, think about those, a lot of money there, a lot of uh, opportunities there. This probably is an option for you. There's still other, many, many other options for you, but this is one of the areas you can consider, all right? And speaking of the time, I think we want to turn around to you so if you have any questions, we have our experts here, just uh, feel free to ask questions. 